Welcome. Thanks for joining me today for the Fun and Easy Guide to Apple Photos. I really appreciate your being here and hope we have a great time together. Um, let me talk a little bit about what we're going to do. I expect to spend about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And what I did this for is to answer a question that many, many of my clients and friends and other people have asked me about, which is, how do I find my way around in Apple Photos? I think Apple Photos is an amazing application. We all get it with our iPhone. We uh, are using it every single day. But there's so much that's packed into it that it's easy to get kind of lost. And so what I want to do is just do a high level, fun, easy tour to show you guys all the, the cool things that you can do in Apple Photos and to um, help you uh, find your way around, get a good foundation and see what's going on. So here's our little tour bus. We're going to get aboard this and go around and show you a few things about the system. So, oh, here we go. So, first of all, I wanted to emphasize that Apple Photos is an ecosystem. And that's one of the reasons that it uh, can seem a little bit confusing to people, because what you're really doing with each device is reaching out and changing things everywhere. So, you know, you may have the, your, your uh, Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, all of these are connected through iCloud so that photos that you work on in one place end up being adjusted someplace else or edited or deleted or enhanced. And you can share them from every place. So it's, it, it's basically, everything everywhere. And this is the thing about Apple Photos that makes it so unique and makes it so cool. So today, just to simplify things, we're really just going to be talking about the iPhone and a little bit about iCloud and your Mac. So we're going to be talking about how to get around, how to see things in the basic Apple Photos environment and uh, how that looks on the iPhone and how that looks on the Mac. Now, one good way to think about the Apple Photos universe is that Photos is really kind of a, a, a repository, it's a database. So what you're doing is you're creating these photos, whether you take the pictures yourself or whether you're importing them from your uh, emails or, or text messages, maybe even a screenshot. And all these are going into this one sort of collective space that you can get at in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, you can think of it as uh, kind of like a bank account where you've put all your, your photos into your bank and you access them from your ATM or, or you know, from, from the lobby or, you know, from, you know, from your uh, browser on your computer. Uh, you can also think about them like iTunes. Uh, because, in fact, it, it really is kind of built out of the whole iTunes concept. And if you're, if you're used to iTunes, you know that you have this, this central collection of your music. And then you have a bunch of playlists. And what we're going to find as we go through this is that the, the albums that are created within Apple Photos um, are essentially like playlists in, for your music. So the same idea and as we go through this I hope you'll start to uh, see where the similarities are and make the whole process a little bit easier for you. Right now as you look at this picture you this, this is this is how many of, of many people sort of look at their Apple photos there's just there's all these pictures and they don't quite know how the heck to deal with them. Well that's what we're going to deal with today. And so uh, by the end of today, you'll see how to find your images, how to, um, how to uh, organize your images, and how to share your images. 
So those are the three things that we're really gonna focus on. So let's go take a look at how that works on the iPhone. Okay, so I'm going to launch the iPhone. Okay, so here we are. And so what you see here is the iPhone uh, setup that most of us are going to tap into. Now, we're going to start with finding. So this is, this is the place, if you don't take away anything else from this talk, that you want to really get a handle on, and that is the Photos tab in Apple Photos. I'm going to back out here a sec just to show. So if I launch uh, my photos, this is what I'm getting. And if we look at the bottom of the screen here, you're going to see that there are uh, three tabs and a search field across the bottom, so four. So we have photos, we have a For You tab now, we have an Album tab, and then we have a Search tab. So we're just going to start out with the Photos tab because that is the most important place to start. Now, all of us are used to uh, swiping through their photos to, to try and find something, and you're sort of looking at it uh, as, a, as a long, continuous group. And that's fine. You may be able to find stuff that way. But what's important about photos is that it's actually created as a chronology. So everything is uh, sorted from oldest to newest. And if you look at the bottom in this newest version of the software, we now have uh, these four groups. So we have all photos, which is where a lot of us uh, spend our time searching. But now we also have years, days, and uh, years, months, and days. So let's just start with years. So if you go to years and you have a sense, as many people do, of kind of when you took a photo, if it's an older photo, what you can do is scan back through the years, and it basically just gives you a placeholder for each spot. Now what's cool about this is if you just let it uh, sit for a second, it actually will scroll through the months automatically and show you uh, what months, uh, sort of a, a representative feeling for each month. You can also swipe sideways and scroll through those months manually. So if you're not sure which year some big event happened, this is kind of a quick way to get there and say, yeah, this is this is the, the year I want to work with. Now, when you tap on it, what it does then is it drills down, as you can see at the bottom. It, it goes two months, and then you can scroll through. And within those months, it will find, uh, may find groups that it wants to uh, zero in on. If you tap those, you'll go down to the day view. And in the day view, it starts to show more detail about what all was going on uh, in that period. So this is a really easy way to zero in really quickly on uh, events that you you, you know you, you know the date for and you can you can find simply chronologically. Now if you go back here to all photos, now we're in that area, now we can scan through and we can see all the photos that apply to that particular time frame. So this is a quick way to, again, start with years, months, days, and all photos for you to find your, uh, find your images. What's really interesting about this view, the all photos view, that not many people realize is in the upper right hand corner, we have a little plus and minus that we can tap and we actually get separate pluses and minuses and by doing that we can actually zoom out to another version of the year uh, view and actually swipe through here to get to 
a year that we might uh, want to uh, zero in on. This one is so like 2013 in my collection was a pretty big year. You can see that it uh, there, there's quite a lot of stuff in there. And so I can go to this and then I can start zeroing in on some fireworks and scenes and, and other things that I've done uh, back out. Now I can also then, uh, I can zoom in, I can also zoom out and you will get to the point where you basically have just a single view like, like so. One other nifty thing about uh, getting to a single view is if you find one, let's see if we can find a photo with some more information. Okay, here's a great example. So here's a photo that um, uh, I got to and if you hold and swipe up slowly, it will show you more information about the photo. So it'll show you where it, uh, where it was taken, if it has a, uh, uh, an ID on it, and you can see other nearby photos, other photos that are in the database that are in that, from that same area. So this is really cool if you're looking for, um, uh, some place, you know, maybe it's a summer uh, uh, holiday kind of place you go to every year, you went to a couple of years, you find one photo from that group. And when you zero in for locations, you can actually see everything in your library related to that area from prior years. So it's very cool. And that's a, a easy way to, to get around. So what you're going to find is this, this whole tab, the photos tab, is the place to go and get familiar with to start finding your photos and, and searching quickly so you're not just randomly swiping through. It's really pretty cool. So we're going to go back to this. Now, uh, the other thing about that is we can go into the search tab and the search tab will actually give us a similar kind of uh, uh, feature. So we can actually search on these places. This is where we get into the find, you know, more of the find stuff. If I, if I type in beach, and hit search, look at what I get. So the, uh, the cool new thing about the uh, photos is that you can actually search on criteria, you can search on keywords, you can search on people, you can search on a bunch of things. And in this case, what it's done is uh, it's returned me all these beach related searches. So, I, so there is a category uh, of beach, which is what photos, um, artificial intelligence is actually identified as beach related photos. So, you know, you can do the same thing with dog, you can do the same thing with, uh, with other search terms. Um, there are two photos on here that were taken on Beach Boulevard, Boulevard wherever that is. Um, there are um, 587 that were on or near Campo Beach Road. Uh, beach activity is, is basically just an artificial intelligence search. Uh, beach chair, I've got 64 pictures of beach chairs. So this is really cool, right? Um, I can click on the see all button and it will just show me the whole collection of photos that it's found that relate to beach. If I tap on a see all, it'll show me all 1150 photos that, that it returned from that search. It shows me that there are uh, three, there are these moments, three, uh, five, seven moments that 
Apple has created from collections and photos that relate to beaches. Uh, I have these all these albums that are related to beaches, have beach names in them or, or beach places. And then it shows these categories, which again are from artificial intelligence of what Apple Photos recognizes. Uh, fireworks, you have a couple where I put keywords on them that include beach, memories, titles, whole list of things. So this is this is again a part of the part of the find category here, and it's a really cool thing to do. Um, you can search on uh, if I do New York. Same kind of thing. Here are a bunch of moments, a bunch of albums, keywords, memories, places that are that are all related to New York. So between our photos searches, which can be very high level or very uh, uh, very reduced, and the searches, you have all the tools you need to find these pictures that that you've uh, added in a chronological way. So you can see that compared to the old standard of folders and subfolders of, you know, you have a folder for 2013, you have January 2013, you have February 2013. That way just doesn't cut it anymore. Uh, we have so many photos this day and age that you really, really benefit from having a uh, database that can be searched in multiple ways and organized in multiple ways. And so this is how you look at it. Uh, we will be taking a look at how this is on the Mac as well, but it's the same process with just, just uh, a few minor differences. So again, this is my big takeaway that I hope, hope you play with. Try the different views uh, to get down to something that you feel really comfortable with. This is really a great tool. Now, next on our tour, we're going to take a quick pass by the, the For You section. Uh, this is labeled a little differently on the Mac, but it's the same idea. So what memories are, are groups of photos that Apple Photos looks at and creates dynamically. So these, these are all things primarily that, that Apple has created, and they're they're collections that it believes have some meaning for you, either because of you know, repetition or the people who are in them or the kind of event it is, the kind of stuff you like to do. Um, uh, Apple software is analyzing this kind of stuff to try and give you some kind of nice surprise uh, pop-up features that you know, you'll enjoy. So here are some uh, uh, featured, these are featured photos that it found that it believes are, are meaningful to me. And in fact, most of them are. Um, here are some actual groups. So this particular one was a photo shoot that I went on out in the snow locally. And it it interpreted this as a really nice little memory that I might like to enjoy and keep. And so I can, I can see uh, this as a video. And it will create this little ditty that uh, I can enjoy. Or I can uh, and, uh, apply some things to it. I can share that if I want to. We'll get into sharing a little bit later. And so there you have it. These are fun things to take a look at. Nice to scan through, you know, when you have a few minutes and kind of see what it's done. And what it also does then is, is uh, collects identifiers for people that it recognizes in there, as well as, again, another location and some other related uh, memories. So that's, that's the memory thing. Uh, let's see, beyond memories, featured photos, 
and we get into shared albums. Now on the on the phone, shared the shared album activity shows up in uh, the For You tab, and um, gives uh, gives you an update as to photos that have been have been shared to you by other people uh, through shared albums or uh, activity that that you've created as well. And then effects. Uh, this is a new thing, actually, in uh, fairly new in Apple Photos, where the software identifies pictures that you've taken. And this is a case where it, there's a live photo that I took. And it's suggesting to me that I should make a loop out of this uh, and shows me kind of what it looks like, rather than just the, the quickie live photo thing. It extends it. Um, I'll be talking uh, on a, another session about uh, how to do effects like that, and they're a lot of fun. Okay, next is a um, is the albums tab, and the albums tab is a little bit of a mix. Um, it used to be all albums that you've created yourself, so this is. This is sort of the ultimate in organization on Apple Photos, where you identify pictures that you want to include in uh, something and it, it puts them there, uh, essentially like a playlist. We talked about that a little earlier. So this is, these albums, you can think of them kind of as your photo playlist. Uh, it also shows uh, shared albums, which we'll talk about in sharing. And uh, it has, this is where they group uh, the people uh, tab, uh, places. You know, if you just go straight into places, it shows you uh, all the places that, you've, that you have photos from. And that's pretty cool too. Then it also has these media types. Now this, this is another nice little addition. Uh, these are, excuse me. These are all photos that are still from this primary photos library. So again, this is where everything is. This is, uh, you'll have a copy of everything here, but like any good database, it is looking at those photos and finding specific things about those photos that will create subgroups. So it automatically, uh, gives you a album of all your videos. So if you know you took a video, it might be faster just to go to the video tab than go back into the dates, you know, and the, the all photos or years to track it down. Um, it keeps track of all the selfies you've done. It uh, has live photos, portrait. You can see these. This is a this is a good thing to go into um, and kind of familiarize yourself with the kind of things you've done. And, you know, after, over time, you may not realize, for instance, how many burst photos you've taken. Uh, and burst photos, uh, again, are a sequence of photos that, that happen either when you do a timed photograph or uh, with a self-timer, or if you, if you choose to do a burst photograph. There's a lot of cool things you can do with them, but they do, create a lot of pictures that you may want to go in and uh, delete or at least edit down so you have something that's a little more meaningful. So anyway, that is what the album tab gets you. And for our purposes, most of where we're going to be is probably in the album groups that we've created ourselves. And I will go into how we do that when we get onto the Mac. What I am going to say here, if we go back to photos, um, is to organize these, to create those. I just want to show you quickly how you select on the Mac, or uh, excuse me, on the iPhone. Because as, as you get into these, Okay, as you get into these, right next to the plus minus button, there is a select button. 
and you can select either by tapping individual photos or you can swipe a group of photos like so. And once you have those selected, then you can go to the share button in the lower left-hand corner and tapping that, you get access to a whole bunch of other options here, which we'll go into later in terms of e copying or um, emailing, or in this case, adding to an album. We can tap that, we can create a new album and just say test. And there we've saved this old group to its own new album, which will show up here. And there it is, test. So those are the ones we just created. Really, really easy. Uh, if I wanted to, I could delete that album. It does not affect the photos in any way. Uh, so that's how albums work. All right, um, that is that is a, a basic overview of photos. And again, I think I think the photos tab is the is the primary place to be. But you can go in and play around with all of this stuff. And my hope is that what may have seemed really overwhelming and and hard to uh, navigate will seem so much easier to navigate once you spend a little time planning with this. All right, so let's take a look now at how this looks when we go over to the Mac. Hang on with me while I switch screens. Okay, so here we are on the Mac. So hopefully this looks a lot more familiar to you than it did a little while ago. Um, so this is, this is my same uh, photo database on the Mac. And now instead of having those uh, four tabs across the bottom, we now have a, um, a sidebar with these groups set up here. So again, we're going back to photos up here at the very top of the sidebar. And we have the same tab now on the top instead of the bottom where we have all photos, we have days, we have months, and we have years, just like we did before. And like before, if we click into one of these, uh, we'll get a month view with, uh, these are again, sort of uh, computer generated groupings of, of things that it looks like we have a lot of interest in. This is uh, in fact a, a weekend that I, I spent in New York at a uh, photography, an iPhone photography class. And we went out and we shot a bunch of pictures around town. So this was, this was really pretty cool. These are these are the result of some of the uh, uh, places that we went. Um, this drills down. So we started with years. We drilled down to months, and now we're uh, at days. And if we go into the individual picture, we can now scroll through like we did before to. Uh, get a better look at things, and ultimately, if we want to, to edit the photos. Now, in this case, the information that we get about these photos um, is up here in the Info tab. And so we can click on Information. We grab this. Here's, here's the little pane that pops up. There we go, like so. So now we actually have uh, quite a bit more information about this photo than we would see on the iPhone, which is another good reason to get comfortable with 
working in photos on your computer. Uh, you can do a lot more work, a lot faster, and you can, the photos are much bigger, so you can see what you're doing better. So um, I, you know, most of my primary work I do on, on the computer, but I will do a lot of quick edits and so forth on my phone. Um, and up here, we have the same, we have the location information again. We, if we want to, we can add keywords here, which we'll talk about in a sec and uh, add a description. So this all works in the same way that it did on the phone. And now uh, we will go to, let's see, we'll go to these uh, memories. And memories have been broken out now from that uh, uh, other, one, the for you. So for you has now gotten expanded. And there's my friend Ripley. Um, so we have the same kind of thing going on. And now, you know, these, these will, uh, let me double click on them, we get more to look at and uh, can drill down to individual photos. Okay, so that's, under memories. Um, you can save these memories as well. You can you can favorite these. So if, if it comes up with something that you like, you can come back to it again and again. Uh, we have favorites here uh, as a separate, uh, separate section. These are all uh, pictures that we've uh, favorited with the little hearts. Um, we have a people album here. Now my people album is still getting getting created uh, so we'll let that uh, finish scanning um, I just upgraded my computer and so it's still processing places here again is a bigger view of the places tab recents and imports are basically the most recent photos that uh, have come in to the database uh, so sometimes if it's something I know that I photographed yesterday, I may come straight to recent instead of go to photos and, and scroll down all the way to the end. Uh, and then recently deleted. Now deleting requires a little bit of an explanation, which is that when we delete something in photos, it actually does not delete it completely right away. Uh, if I go in and delete something, I'm going to hit the delete key here. I'll get prompted to uh, say, yes, I want to delete this from all devices. Um, that is the kicker you want to be aware of. When you delete something on one device, it gets deleted everywhere. Uh, because as you remember, we have all of these devices that you have connected to your iCloud uh with the same information um your the icloud photo library its sole job is to make sure that every device that's attached to it has the same pictures and so if you delete a picture in one place it deletes it everywhere if you add a picture in one place it will get added everywhere if you rename a picture if you crop a picture Whatever you do on one device gets transferred everywhere else. So one of the things that comes up uh, quite often are people who are running out of space on their iPhone and they mistakenly believe that if they delete photos or videos on their phone, that those will not get deleted from their iCloud and from other places. So um, in a case like that, we have to figure out a different strategy because um, if they went ahead and deleted stuff, it actually would get deleted everywhere. Uh, the good thing is when, it, when you do delete, it goes into, here's, here's the photo that we just uh, deleted a second ago. It actually goes in here and you'll see that it says there's 29 days left before it actually gets deleted. So it goes into this sort of slush fund here um, where it sits 
and it waits in case you have second thoughts and want to come back and get it. And in case you do, you can go into recently deleted. You can go to up here in the upper right hand corner of the button that says recover. And uh, I've selected it now. It's gone back into the collection. Here it is again now. So now it's back where it was. So this is another cool thing about Apple Photos that it, it really is, is doing its best to try and save us all from ourselves. So, you know, who doesn't need that? So that, again, it, all of these, in my mind, kind of belong to this, this photos section, okay? This is, this is for, you know, if you're interested in finding things, this is where you find them. And this is uh, easy to get around, it's easy to scan. Um, again, this grid in the all photos view, we have a little slider in the upper right here now, instead of those plus and minus uh, things, that we can, we can zoom in and out to get a size that we like working with. And we also have a little button up here that's kind of cool where you can, you can actually have these sort as square. Let's see here, I guess we have to go out a little bit. You can have them sort as square, or you can have the full frame image once it gets, once it opens out to a certain size. If it's a little too small, it automatically goes into that square grid because it just needs it for space. So there you are. Um, that is the Photos tab. Now, after that is where we get into the searches and the organizing and so forth. And down here, uh, again, in this Albums tab, which we had on the phone, here are the, the pre-made uh, groupings. Again, videos, uh, selfies, et cetera. Um, panoramas, I love to do panoramas, so I, I have a, quite a few of those, uh, burst photos and so forth. Uh, we now have screen recordings as well, uh, which you can do, uh, animated, you can, it also has uh, screenshots. We all have tons of screenshots and a lot of them are pretty temporary. We don't really need to keep them forever. So this is a handy way to go and find screenshots that you uh, really want to just clear out. Okay. Um, uh, what happened? Okay. So the uh, my albums is where we go to see um, the albums that we've created. Here's that test album that I made on uh, the iPhone, and it's still here. But if I delete the album here by right clicking and saying delete album. I will get this uh, notice that says, are you sure you want to delete this album? The items in this album will still be visible on your iPhone li iPhoto library. Um, Okay, so here is the test album that I created on my iPhone. And if I right click on that, it'll give me the option to delete the album, rename the album, duplicate the album. But I'm gonna show you, if you delete the album, you get this alert that says, are you sure you wanna delete this album? The items in this album will still be visible in your photo library and other albums that contain them. This album will be removed from uh, iCloud photos and all your devices. So what it's saying is you can delete these albums, but you will um, not delete the photos that are in the albums. And that's really important. So 
you know, albums are, are very fluid. There's an easy way to organize. Uh, we showed about how to make an album on the phone. The same thing happens here. If I delete this, um, I can go back to my photos collection. I can select a bunch of photos. Um, in this case, I can go down to my albums, hit the plus sign, and say I want to make an album of these pictures that I've just selected. So it will do that. And now I have a, uh, an album here that will allow me to name. I'll make this test two. And again, that's, is, that's all it takes to create an album. So again, we've gone through how to find your pictures. Uh, this is how we organize the pictures. And I'm going to share one other trick that is something you um, can do on the Mac that you can't do on iPhone. And that is use a smart album. Now, a smart album is basically a search. It's a saved search. So if you recall, on the phone, we did um, a search on beaches. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to call this my beach album. I'm going to click on these cri this criteria and say, uh, album, uh, I'm going to say description includes beaches. Okay. I didn't find a lot with the description. I'm going to go to, I'm going to edit the smart album. I'm going to add another criteria where we say, uh, let's see, description. Keyword is beach and uh, nuts. Hmm. Okay. That's a bad one. I paused it. Save for
Okay, now I'm going to talk about a couple of ways to create albums from searches. So the first thing is we have this option now to create albums uh, from uh, as smart albums, which and smart albums are really saved searches. So I'm going to create one. So instead of album, I'm going to choose smart album. And I'm going to call this beaches. And I've keyworded some of these. Now, a keyword is just a tag uh, that gets added to a photo. And in this case, I'm going to look for uh, the keyword beach because I have added it to some. Let's see. And see what I can find. Uh, yeah. What is going on?
Yeah. I'm paused. Yeah, and yeah, I ran into a couple of glitches here that I can't demonstrate unless I figure this out. Four. Yeah, nice, right? I'm not sure that's the other thing I, I need to. Oh, well, it does have a timer, but I, I don't think I'm, I mean, I actually think I'm close to the end right now, but. Um, I don't know. Oh, good.
So now I wanted to show you um, about another type of album, which is a uh, smart album. And a smart album is basically a, uh, a saved search. Uh, and you can search on a number of criteria. But what it does is it makes this automatic search that's always looking for photos that have a certain criteria that you've defined. So let's show you how that works. I go down on um, I go down to the my album section again because we're organizing this and the, the little plus sign that shows up next to my albums I click on that and one of my options is a smart album so in this case I am going to I'm going to call this beaches to I did another beaches before and Here's my search criteria. Now I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to do it based on the keywords. So um, keyword uh, that's attached to that photo, a keyword is a tag, essentially. You may think of it that way. Uh, I'm going to say is, and then I'm going to search. These are a list of all the keywords that I've used somewhere in this database. I'm going to use beach as my search and it shows that there's 445 images in here that have the keyword beach. So I'm going to say okay and here they are. So it has gone back to the photos collection, the main photos collection. It's looked for all the photos in here that have a beach tag on it and then it's collected them down here just as we said before like a playlist would on uh, uh, in iTunes. So this is a great way to uh, create a collection that is going to be added on to. So, so now anytime that I, I add new photos that I take at the beach uh, I can add that keyword to it, and it will automatically show up in this group along with everything else. Now, how do you add a keyword? Good question. So keywords are accessible up in the window menu, and we go to Keyword Manager. Uh, keyword Manager can also be brought up with a command K. Um, and with this in place, you can, you can actually select an image and then add uh, the keyword to it. In this case, it's already there. Another way is if I go to a photo, Here's a photo of a loaf of bread. If I go up to the info palette for this, there are, it says add a keyword. There are no keywords there, but I could put in bread. And now there it is. And if I created a new smart album, where the keyword is bread. 
that would now show up in the album. So this is a this is a cool way to do it if you if you have like recurring themes that may not be um, found automatically with a with a search. Uh, you want to make sure that they stay the same. Um, if if you do people uh, tagging, uh, that will also you, you'll also be able to to use smart albums to group those if you choose to. Um, it's just a another way that you can organize your photos. So the final one that I want to show you is projects. And projects are a way to organize your photos for things that you want to create. So if you're doing, uh, if you like to do photo books, for instance, um, my projects down at the bottom of the albums list is where you would do that. And what's great about this is you can import uh, extensions from the app store that will let you create books uh, for various manufacturers right within Apple Photos. So these are these are a few of the photo book uh, plugins. Uh, let's see, here's a project uh, for a bookmaker called Motif. Uh, there are uh, other bookmakers right right now as of uh, as of today. Uh, MPix, which is a uh, popular with many people, uh, offers prints. I think they offer books as well. You can do um, calendars. You can do cards. You can do a pretty wall prints. You can do some cool wall prints. Uh, so many things right from within photos. So you don't have to export out. You don't have to go to a web. Uh, a book builder in order to to uh, create them. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and I I'll be going through how to do that in some other uh, live trainings. But for right now, it's important just to know that they're there. And uh, when you go to create a project, what will happen is you will get a pop up. Again, you have a little plus sign down here by my project. Uh, this shows you all the different categories of product that you can create. Um, all of these, uh, all these manufacturers have book design. Uh, these have calendars, uh, card printing, wall decor, um, prints, uh, photo prints, um, and then slideshows you can you can create right within Apple Photos and just uh, email them out to people. So that is uh, another way that you organize your photos and uh, then share them, which is the last category we're going to talk about. So you can share you can share your photos as as products that you print and send or or have somebody send for you. Um, there's a lot of cool options to do that. Um, but in terms of basic sharing, um, in on the Mac and on the iPhone, uh, sharing is really just a matter of making a photo selection and using the share button which is the square with an upward arrow. And in both cases, as soon as you make your selection and choose the share button, you get all these options of ways that you can share your, your images uh, through mail, messages, uh, airdrop. Uh, you can save them to the Notes app or Evernote. I like to do that a lot. Um, or you can send them uh, out as uh, as links to for somebody else to download multiple options so just keep in mind all it is is to select the photos that you want use the share button and just follow the prompts to send it in the way that you would like now there is one special thing in apple photos um, and that is the shared album which we've talked about and I'll just 
we'll go through that quickly and I'll, I'll leave you with that as a final, as a final uh, sharing option. If you select some photos and then choose the share button again, you'll see that shared albums is one of the options. Now what shared albums are, are photos posted to iCloud that other Apple users can, can subscribe to, and it shows up right in the sidebar of their uh, Photos app. If they're on Windows, uh, you can send a link and it'll essentially be like a web gallery. So it's a great way to share these, these uh, things with people who, who just want to see them. Um, it's, it's cooler than sending a, an attachment an email because it's like always there. You can add to it, you can download from it, and um, it, it's not taking up space on your, um, uh, your email feed or your messages feed. So what I would do in this case is uh, I've selected the images. I've said add to a shared album. I can put comments in here saying this was uh, us going out and getting a Christmas tree. I can then add uh, a name for the album. Uh, I will call it uh, Tree Hunt. And then I can invite people. So uh, from here, uh, what it does is it looks at the contacts that you have uh, on your Mac or on your iPhone and it literally lets you add people to it. And once you hit create, it will send them an invitation to join or subscribe to the um, shared album. And where that goes is down here in the sidebar, in the shared section, here are shared albums. So these are all albums that I'm subscribing to that either I've created and shared to somebody else or somebody else has created and shared with me and I've subscribed and I can go in and take a look at these photos uh, whenever I want. Uh, and whenever something, when anything uh, changes, I'll get an alert to say, hey, there's a new photo showing up in the album. So there we have it. So we've gone through how to find your photos. We've gone through how to organize your photos. I'm going to flip back to the other screen. And Okay, um, yeah, so find your photos, find your way around. So we went through how, how photos, the, the photos uh, tab is really the, the best place to start. I mean, you can do most of your work right there. We also went through search. So you can, you can search on multiple criteria. It gets better and better all the time. Currently, I think uh, they say that uh, the app, uh, for the Photos app can recognize about 4,000 different objects and situations. So that gets better and better all the time. You can add keywords if you want to be able to search on specific things over and over again. And you have locations and people tagging. Um, so all of this makes it easier for you to find and, and share your, your work. Organizing, we talked about uh, albums, how you can create your own albums, your own groupings, and when you, you can, the albums are kind of your playground. They're just like a playlist uh, in iTunes. If you, you can add things to them, you can delete things from them, and it doesn't affect your overall photos library. And then finally, we talked about how to share your photos, which really is as simple as selecting the things you want to share and going to that share icon uh, wherever it is on the on the iPhone or the Mac and then just following the prompts to to get those photos out uh, to whoever you want in, in the way that you want. So I hope that you had a great time uh, learning how to get around photos and taking our tour today. Um, it was a lot of fun here and 
there are going to be more of these uh, types of live trainings. So I hope to see you again on one real soon. Uh, this video will be posted online and we'll have some uh, show notes about it, uh, maybe a couple of other tidbits uh, that you can download and uh, enjoy in the future. Please uh, tell your friends and uh, come back soon.